G'day, my name's Robot Man. Today we're going to do a little bit of coding, some word block coding with some Lego Spike Prime. If you haven't done it before or you're not very experienced and you'd really want to know a few more things on how to get your robot to move around, then this video is for you. Check it out. You can build a car really simply just with these parts. You just need a couple of motors, about 10 pins, a couple of wheels, the hub, the ball and socket, and a grey pin like this. So I'm just going to whip up a car pretty quickly. I like to put three pins in to hold the motor in place and you can just put the motor on like this okay and do the same on the other side it's a very simple little car but it'll be perfect for what we're going to do today so you've got two motors opposite each other i'll put just two pins in each motor to put, hold the wheels in place Same on the other side. So I reckon this car's taking me about one minute to make. Put the grey pin in there, put the ball in there. It's always good when you build a vehicle to have two wheels and a ball and socket, and that way it can turn really easily rather than thinking some people think you've got to have four wheels if it's a car. No, this acts like a wheel and it's actually better because it turns really easily. Always plug my motors into C and D. I never use those clips, I always just wrap them around a couple of times to keep them out of the way. C and B, we're good to go. Little car, but pretty awesome. So we're going to start coding it. So I've opened the app here and I've zoomed in so I can see this nice and big. Whenever you're using the blocks here, you often use the pink ones to make a vehicle move. So one thing you need to do every time you make a vehicle is to set the movement motors. Because you're using two motors, you need to tell the hub which two motors are going to move the vehicle. So often it defaults to A and B, but I often plug my motors into C and D. It doesn't really matter which two ports you use, because every port can be for motors or sensors. But today, I'm going to use mine in port C and D, just like I built on my robot. So you always have to have that block there. It always should be at the start so your hub knows straight away which ports your motors are plugged into. And then you can choose the speed. Now the speed's interesting because a very fast robot isn't quite as accurate as a slow robot. So if you're trying to do something that involves accuracy, like going exact amount of centimetres and things, then the speed should be quite low, like 30%. If you want to go super fast, you could go up to 100%. It does let you type any number you like into this box, but you don't really want to make it go more than 100% because it won't travel more than 100%. And I've found that if you go higher than 100%, sometimes the robot gets a little confused and it doesn't go straight. And often you want the robot to go straight because then you'll get it to go where you want it to go. So... Let's assume we're going to re go reasonably slow and make it about 30%. And the thing about all this coding is that you can test your robot and you can always change some of the numbers later if you want to. Another thing you should determine is how big your wheels are. Now if you're using small wheels like I've got on my robot, then it's okay to use this default setting. Because the diameter on the robot's wheels, if they're small, is this size. And that's how far the robot will travel when the wheels turn once. It says set one motor rotation. So when the wheels rotate once, it's going to travel 17 centimetres. Now if you're using big wheels, you might want to change that to 27.6 centimetres because the big wheels have a circumference of 27.6. It just means that if you go forwards um, a number of centimetres, if I want the robot to travel 30 centimetres, then if this is in place and I've built big, a robot with big wheels, then it will be very accurate. If you've got little wheels, then it has to be 17.5, okay? And then it will travel exactly 30 centimetres. The hub needs to know what size wheels you've got, and that's why you include this block here. If, the, if you don't include that block there, the hub has no idea how big your wheels are, and it can't judge distances if it's not sure how big the wheels are. So you need to put that block in there, especially if you're using big wheels. And it's either 27.6 or 
17.5 if you're using the standard spike prime wheels. If you're using other wheels, you might have to measure the circumference, and I'd do that with a piece of string. Okay, so we've got those three important blocks in here, and then you can tell it to start moving if you want. So let's just test this out. Whenever you need to connect your robot, you always need to press connect up here, don't you? So you press connect. Mine are all updated. Yours should be too. Press green. And you press the button that has Bluetooth on it. And then you can see your robot. So you press the button, press Bluetooth, and then you can see your robot and you press connect. Okay, so my hub is connected now because I can tell there's a little green tick up here. And it also shows me that motors are plugged into CND. You can always see your motors here too. If you tap on this, you can see which ports things are plugged into. And it's really important that these letters match the letters in your code. So down the bottom of this screen, I can press play and we'll see if the robot travels 30 centimeters. Now, my robot went backwards. If your robot's going the way, you could just turn it that way and make that the front, or you can swap the cables around. So if you press, if you swap CMD around, then the motor, then the motors go the opposite direction. So the robot traveled about 30 centimeters, probably pretty close to exactly 30 centimeters actually. Sometimes you want the robot to turn though. When you want to turn the robot, you often use this block here. And this allows it to turn right or left for a number of rotations or for a number of degrees or for a number of seconds. Now the degrees can be confusing because some people think that they can get the robot to turn 90 degrees here. If I go 90 degrees here, the robot's not going to turn 90 degrees, just the wheel will turn 90 degrees. So I actually don't use the degrees setting very much at all. I often rely on rotations or seconds. Let's go for seconds, because seconds are kind of easier to calculate. When you want things to turn for a number of seconds, you can kind of count how many seconds you want things to turn for, and then you can increase it or decrease it pretty easily. We don't want to turn for 90 seconds, though. How about we just turn for one second? And this number here is interesting, because a right turn of 30, it's not really 30 degrees either. That's not degrees. It's kind of how sharp the turn is. So a low number like 30 is a very wide turn, but if you wanted to turn on the spot, you'd do a turn like right 100. A right 100 turn is like a 100% turn. In other words, one wheel will turn backwards and one wheel will turn forwards. So if you wanted to turn um, on the spot, you do a right 100 turn, or you can swing this wheel around and do a, a left 100 turn. So let's test that out. We're gonna press we're going to press play and it's going to go forwards and then turn. Wow, it turned left. <laughs> so let's make it turn right. My robot almost did a 180 then, didn't it? So if I wanted to turn 90 degrees for this robot, I might go for half a second turn. And see if that turns about 90 degrees. Pretty close. So sometimes there's a lot of trial and error involved. Often there's a lot of trial and error involved. And uh, you gotta try and work out exactly where you want it to go by changing the number of seconds. Or you can change how sharp it turns if you want to, but I find it easier just for it to turn on the spot by choosing right 100 or left negative 100. Let's see if we can get it to turn the right angle. It's pretty good pretty much a right angle. So you can fiddle with these blocks. You can fiddle with these blocks and get it to turn exactly where you want it to go. But that's pretty much how you get it to move a number of centimeters and turn. If you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you could like this video. And a lot of challenges that you do, you just need to move and turn, move and turn, move and turn. And you can keep adding blocks to that. Um, you can go start moving again, maybe change it to centimeters and maybe turn Maybe you need to go 20 centimeters this time. And we'll turn again at the end of that. We'll turn the opposite way. Let's go left 
for 0 0.6. It should do about a right angle if we're going for seconds there. I often like to use this block too at the end. You go to the control se section, control, and you can choose some of these that says stop. You can exit the program. So you can exit the program if you put this block here and change it to exit program. And I reckon that's often handy because then you don't have to keep pressing stop on your device. It's going to go forward 30 centimeters, turn right, then go forward and then turn left. Nice. Some people think you need to put stop moving there, but you don't need to press stop moving if it has a certain number of time it needs to move for or distance. It'll just stop by itself. So you don't need to have stop moving in this particular block of coding. This is called a stack of coding. And sometimes people like to do fancy things like make the lights come on for two seconds and that sort of thing. But I find that these sorts of blocks can interfere with the coding. Sometimes it stops to turn the lights on and that sort of thing. What you can do with the Spike Prime app is create a separate stack of blocks. And I find this quite handy. You can create a block here that will do all the movements and then you can do all the other fancy stuff with sounds and lights and things over here. Okay, there's lots of sounds you can experiment with. You can add sounds, you can, after you've added a sound, you can choose it. You can have lots of things over here that don't interfere with these. Because when you press play down the bottom right, it does all this stack and this stack at the same time. So sometimes it's useful to have two stacks of things going at once. Okay, so this is a very basic kind of programming that will get your robot to move around and you can get it to do some other fun things as well. If you've had fun experimenting with basic movement, maybe it's time to check out my beginner's guide to using all the sensors.